I'm potent, that means that you are in fear mode. You are in lack. Okay? That's what that means. I'm in fear mode. I'm in lack, and I have to pronounce my potency. Okay? Because only ego is in lack and needs to feel potent. In realization, all of that stuff gets what? Nibbana, nirvana, blown out. Okay? You understand what it blown out is? Okay? So... <laughs> Mm, I can tell you, if that's what you're chasing, potency, and want to call yourself enlightened in potency, then you are really on the wrong path. Because that's not the path to realization. Okay? That's the path of someone, again, that's in lack, in fear, that needs to prop up ego rather than going beyond ego into that zero point balance. If you understood enlightenment, you would understand lingam. Okay? The lingam is what shape? Like the zero. Why is that? Because if you get there to the divine is, okay, what one finds is that void that's not devoid, it's the pregnant void. I term it the pregnant void because it is pregnant with everything that will ever come into existence prior to the mental spin. And the mental spin is what? It's like the prism that takes the energy of the divine is and then subdivides it into the transient realm. Okay? Now, if you are anywhere close to enlightenment, like you want to claim, okay, you would know that. You would know that Advaita, enlightenment, is prior to the divisionary realm of Dvaita. Okay. So yes, I see you've got a Hindu name. You put on a sari. Okay, very nice. Okay. You speak some Hindi. Maybe you've gone to India, Anajana, back and forth. Okay. Maybe you've stayed there for a time. But I see so many people that want to go to India and they're playing the spirituality game. Okay? They're not actually there to do the hardship. They go to the ashrams, they go to a crowd, they go and learn some lingo. Okay? That's not enlightenment, okay? And most of the ashrams there, 99.9% .9 of them are very political. That's why when I was living in India, I never lived at any ashrams, okay? You go to the banks of the Ganges and you do your sadhana, It's an internal journey. It's not the spiritual circus of going to somebody like Nityananda or the Sadhguru that's selling this and selling that and saying everything that ego likes to hear. Okay? It's something quite different than that. So thank you for coming to the channel here. But your claim of enlightenment and 
potency shows immediately that there's not even a rudimentary understanding, even in the logical framework, let alone actual changes in consciousness as to what you're saying. Okay? And I tell you once again, Nityananda is guilty. He uses hypnosis type techniques. He tries to awaken Kundalini and I went to him and told him what you are doing is dangerous. You know what his thing was? I'll figure it out later. Okay? Yeah. So he's running, he's hiding. I'm telling you that he knows nothing. He's a con man. 100% a con man. All of his hagiography is made up. When he says he was in the Himalayas, he was in a small ashram which he couldn't even complete. Okay. You might want to check into something before you run around saying he's innocent. Find out exactly what this person is and is not. Okay. You know, I was one of the first people out there outing this guy. Because I've seen what he's doing. I know it's 100% bogus. Egos like it. Okay. $15,000. And you can come and get a mirror so you can stare at yourself. Okay. He's telling you all these lies about powers and this and that, and it's nonsense, okay? He is not a genuine guru. A genuine guru does not sell courses. The path is not for sale. We give it out as a matter of course, okay? for those that are truly wanting to move forward to liberation, those that are ready for that path. So please don't be taken in by these con artists, these guys, okay? Or these Nakali Babas, these fakes that run around bakshish, 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 because that's 100% against what being a sadhu is. If you are a genuine sadhu, you go and you do your, uh, th the things you need to do, your meditations, whatever, and people will come and offer. Okay. While there, I did meet a few genuine sadhus, but 99.9% .9 of them are Nakali Babas. Okay. Smoking the smoke and token the token and, and, you know, wanting to put a mala around people and, oh, now you're my student, give me this, give me that. All Nakali Babas. Okay. So you come here, you don't know my channel, you don't know myself. Okay. You think because I'm doing tarot. Okay which is my game, my fun, that you can befool me with this nonsense. Okay. I do have sannyas names as well. Guru Swamiji, most people know me by. I am a completed guru. 
of Kundalini. I went through the Kundalini path, completed it in 1999. You can find my books on Amazon, on Etvida, Kundalini, etc. No nonsense, no BS, okay? The real deal. Real deals don't have to go around dressed and look like this or look like that. Because realization is of consciousness. It's not about what clothing you are wearing. Okay? So my two spiritual names, if you want to go with my Buddhists, Karma So Nam Wang Mo. Okay? In the Kala Chakra tradition, or you can go with my Hindu name, Kali Udamanandagiri, Ganga Puri Kali Udamanandagiri. <laughs> That's a long one, yeah. <laughs> Ganga Puri Kali Udamanandagiri. The bliss of the enlightenment of Kali. Okay, living in the bliss of the enlightenment of Kali. Kali Udamanandagiri. The mountain. Ganga Puri. In the city. In the bliss of the enlightenment of Kali, of the mountain. Okay? So, again, you know, you should be weary, leery of going to people's channels and putting out something like you are saying that you are enlightenment and you are potency. Because that's an immediate showing that no, you haven't even begun the path yet. Okay. And again, if you were actually enlightenment, you'd be able to speak of it rather than sending a link of somebody else trying to talk about it. You would be living in that stillness, okay? Toriatita. Toriatita is that still mind. No more running thoughts, still. Zero point balance. In that stillness, the world revolves around it, like the linga. That's why they have the linga. That is what it's representing. In the center is that stillness. The divine is. And around it comes the yoni, comes shakti, comes the transient. But you are in stillness. That's what remains. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to leave this here. Good luck with your journey. But don't make yourself look foolish by putting out claims as to something you can't even address without sending a link for somebody else trying to explain what they think it is. Okay? Namaste.